Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about a discovery of another unusual exoplanet, this time not because of its structure and not because of what's on it or in it, but because of the way it moves around its parent star. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So let's begin by exploring what exactly is this planet. Well, it's a type of an object known as a Super Jupiter. As you can probably tell from the name alone, it's basically an object that is a lot larger and a lot more massive than Jupiter. Well, okay, it's more massive, but usually size-wise, it's more or less the same. And so these Super Jupiters, um, we've discovered quite a lot of them actually, are usually really easy to see and to find because not only are they really big in size, but they also pull on their own star in quite a dramatic fashion. Let me show you an example. So here we have planet Earth and our sun in the distance. This is much, much closer than it is in real life. And if we look around um, for long enough, we'll notice that even though our planet is being pulled uh, on by the sun, at the same time, our planet also pulls on the sun. And you can see this in this velocity graph right here, as we'll show you that with time, uh, the velocity of our sun, this is actually just showing you the speed of our sun, will increase every time Earth moves around it. Now here, the actual speed is only about 50 centimeters per second, or roughly around foot and a half per second. So it's very, very little. But if we put a Super Jupiter around this uh, object in the same sort of region, the sudden change in graph will be quite dramatic. Notice how it happens so fast that it's actually kind of even hard to see what the speed is. So if we run this a little bit more, you'll notice that now the speed of our sun is roughly around 1.4 kilometers per second. And we can see the patterns changing as the object pulls on our sun. And so the scientists can easily see these observations in the night sky and they can thus detect when we see a very large planet. And this is kind of how they discovered this planet right here, although it probably doesn't look like this, but this is HR 5183b. Located about 102 light years away from Earth, even though it is quite far away, it was very easy to see how it pulls on its home star. But the problem is that the motion it was creating did not really look like this. Instead, it looked like something a little bit different. Let me see if I can try to simulate this here. But basically, the motion that they observed looked like this. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting, because what you're looking at right now is the type of a motion that can be created if the planet has an extremely high eccentricity compared to other planets. In other words, it doesn't follow a circular orbit, but instead has a very prolonged, very oval-shaped orbit. Now, if we were to take a look at the orbit in Universe Sandbox, we would see something like this. Now, this is very, very simplified. As a matter of fact, it doesn't really come that close to its parent star. The more realistic representation is right here. This is uh, from Caltech channel because the researchers that found this planet are from Caltech. And so in this simulation, we can see that at its closest, the planet comes closer than the orbit of Jupiter. So this is roughly around three astronomical units. But at its farthest, it jumps all the way past the orbit of, of Neptune, which is roughly around 40 astronomical units away. And so it's a very eccentric orbit. And this is something we've never actually seen in any star system out there. Even um, around our own solar system, only comets like this right here, this is uh, Haley Bob from 1995, would have such unusual orbits. So basically, a planet would not really have an orbit that's that eccentric unless something unusual and something potentially catastrophic happened to it. So first of all, how could it have such an orbit? And one potential explanation is, of course, if another really massive planet came somewhat close to this planet and either got kicked out itself or possibly also changed its orbit dramatically. So two massive planets, and here we can try to simulate this by placing another really massive Jupiter-like object very close, uh, would influence each other enough to potentially change the orbit of the other quite a lot. 
So this is one potential explanation. I'm not entirely sure if this is what's happened, but the other explanation is very similar to what I just recently um, explained in one of the other videos about our own Jupiter. There may have been a very large head-on collision that would dramatically change the velocity of the object, dropping its orbit by basically where it is now. So assuming that this planet was originally really far away from the parent star and then received a collision from some kind of an object, like a really massive ice giant, its orbit would then drop quite a lot. And in this case, because I just collided this with this an extremely massive object, its orbit dropped so much that it's probably now going to actually smack into this star uh, that we have here. So this is um, possibly also how the orbit changed. We're not entirely sure. We have no evidence for either one of these events. But what we do know is that um, because this planet is really massive, it's actually about three times as massive as Jupiter, it's going to have so much gravitational influence in that particular star system that it's most likely going to kick out any other planet out of the system or potentially have it collide with itself or with the parent star. Now let me demonstrate. Let's place this object into our own solar system and basically see what happens if it has a very similar orbit with very similar eccentricity parameters as we've de just detected in real life. So here's what this orbit would look like um, in Universe Sandbox. You can see that it comes really close, kind of where the asteroid belt is, and then it sort of moves away farther than the orbit of Neptune. So here, if we launch this, and if we basically run this for a few years, watch what happens. And remember, this planet is about three times more massive than Jupiter. So even Jupiter stands no chance here. So as soon as it starts coming closer and closer to the inner solar system, within just a few years, it's going to start dramatically influencing the orbits of everything. And you'll notice them change quite a lot as soon as it passes here. So even though it's not really easy to see yet, it starts to slowly shift all of the orbits around. So here, um, let's just run this for a few centuries of in-game time and then basically see what all of this looks like after, let's say, I don't know, like 300 years. So within about first 500 years of its influence in our solar system, you can see that it already shifted Saturn way closer to Jupiter, so it already affected some of the planets. It also kicked out pretty much most of the major asteroids from the asteroid belt, and it's constantly moving objects around, creating a lot of chaos, a lot of potential collisions, and it's very likely that it will eventually cause many of these objects to either completely escape or collide with other objects. And so here, if I just keep running this for fun, and you can definitely try this by yourself by placing something just as massive with an eccentric orbit, you'll see that every time it comes close to the inner solar system, something changes. Now, our Earth is still fine because for the most part, it will take possibly like a million years or so before the orbit is shifted dramatically, but there's a very high chance something might collide with planet Earth before this happens. And so this is something that would be really interesting to investigate in this particular star system by looking at it and by seeing what exactly happened to other planets. Are they also in very unusual orbits? Do they have some sort of collisions happening there right now? Maybe this will be the first star system where we actually discover an interplanetary collision because we've never actually seen one happening in real life. We know they happen in our solar system, there are a lot of signs indicating that they happened billions of years ago, but a modern planetary collision would be quite a discovery. And anyway, so if I keep running the simulation, eventually the solar system that we have right now will be completely unrecognizable. It will be fun to find out one day what really happens to planet Earth if a similar object does orbit with such unusual orbital parameters, but maybe we'll discover this in some of the future videos. For now, that's really all I wanted to share with you. Check out the study in the description below, and we'll definitely talk more about this particular star system once we learn more about it. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.